Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The United States Army, represented by the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, Company A, 4th Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, is proud to present this special performance. With a heritage of service that spans over two centuries, the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, has a unique dual mission. It is the Army's official ceremonial unit and escort to the President in Washington, D.C. It is also entrusted with the responsibility of protecting our nation's capital during times of national emergency as part of the Joint Force Headquarters National Capital Region. The infantrymen of Company A maintain tactical proficiency through training at Fort A.P. Hill, Virginia. The Old Guard's ceremonial duties include welcoming official guests to the Department of the Army, Department of Defense, and the President, guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington National Cemetery, and performing in a variety of parades and community events. The Old Guard has also contributed to the global war on terror by deploying rifle companies to the Horn of Africa in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, and a rifle company deployed to Taji, Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard uses fully operable Brown Best Muskets and the Daniel King Howitzer. For today's demonstration, the Howitzer and Muskets are loaded only with black powder. During an actual battle, these Muskets fired a one-ounce, three-quarter-inch diameter lead ball, creating a formidable wall of fire. Our performance will begin in just a moment. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is the official representative of the U.S. Army's colonial heritage. The unit participates in over 200 ceremonies and reenactments annually. They are dressed in reproduction blue uniforms with red faces in accordance with General Washington's General Order of 2nd October 1779. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard, also known as Washington's Lifeguard, was established on March 12, 1776. General George Washington issued an order calling upon each of the 13 original state's regiments to detail four soldiers each to serve as his personal bodyguard. As a result, the Commander-in-Chief's Guard was the first regiment in the Continental Line to have soldiers from all 13 states within its ranks. General Washington handpicked the original 54 members of the Commander-in-Chief's Guard. The soldiers were trained in the formal tactics of 18th century warfare according to the instructions of Baron Friedrich von Steuben and exemplified the steady professionalism American soldiers could attain with proper leadership. majority of Continental soldiers were infantrymen. The infantryman was armed with a 12-pound, .75 caliber, smooth-bore, brown best musket. This was the standard weapon of the Continental soldier during the American Revolution. It is a flint-locked, muzzle-loading weapon with a maximum effective range of 80 to 100 yards. The bayonet weighs approximately one pound and has an 11 to 13-inch blade. The accoutrements he wears were prescribed for the Commander-in-Chief's Guard in 1776. His equipment consists of a cartridge box, which contains 24 paper cartridges of ammunition, a bayonet sling scabbard, and a wooden canteen designed to hold one quart of water. The Daniel King Howitzer section was a three to four soldier element. The Daniel King Howitzer was made of bronze and designed in Pennsylvania in 1776 was the standard light artillery piece of Continental units during the American Revolution. Continental soldiers used various tools in order to fire the howitzer, to include the ladle, a small shovel that inserted the charge, the worm, a tool to pull out any stuck cartridges, the sponge and rammer, a tool to clear the barrel of any embers and to pack this cartridge, and the lint stock with slow match in order to light the charge. <laughs> the 
the basic fighting element of the Continental Army was the platoon. The platoon consisted of 10 to 20 men commanded by an officer armed with an s pontoon and sword. First platoon is commanded today by First Lieutenant Ryan McCollum. Two platoons form a division. To the front and forth! Two to four divisions form a battalion. To the front and step march! One, two, three, four, five, six, four. The second division is commanded by First Lieutenant Michael Dwyer. The battalion commander marches at the head of the formation. He carries an 18th century weapon called an s -pontoon. Besides being an effective weapon, the s also serves as a badge of rank, making it possible to quickly locate battalion and division officers in the ranks. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by Captain Andrew Talone. The senior sergeants positioned to the rear of the formation help maintain discipline and to keep the ranks dressed during an advance. He carries his own symbol of rank, a double-edged spear with a head of iron called a halberd. The senior sergeants for today's demonstration are Sergeant First Class Bruce Nelson and Sergeant First Class John Sykes. The battalion would not be complete without other support elements. Field music is important to the command and control of the battalion in camp and on the battlefield. The fifes and drums march at the head of the battalion of the commander and act as his voice. They are used to signal troop formation and other daily events. In battle, they are placed on the flanks and the rear. In keeping with 18th century tradition, the old guard, fife and drum corps, wear uniforms with colors reversed to signify that they are musicians, not combatants. Since the 16th century, the regimental colors have been one of the most important elements in a military unit. The colors indicate the commander's location and soldiers keep their positions and formation by dressing on the colors. At the center of our formation is the personal colors of General George Washington, the commander in chief's car. Today's color ensign is Specialist Joshua Nestel. What you are about to witness is demonstration of 18th century battlefield tactics. Unlike the irregular militia that confronted British soldiers in Massachusetts in 1775, the Continental Army fought using the tactics of European professional soldiers. Imagine, if you will, you have just traveled back 239 years, and this American battalion is about to meet the approaching British regular infantry. To the front and slap off! Exposed infantry is extremely vulnerable to cavalry attacks. The commander in chief's car will now demonstrate its response to an enemy mounted threat. The commander will quickly move his unit into a rectangular defensive position known as defense against cavalry. Take care and defend against cavalry. Forward! Oh, mount and one and two and three. Oh. This formation provides the commander in chief's guard with the ability to protect itself from all sides. Take care. Fire by the giant. Thank <laughs> you. 
squirrels are running around. <laughs> <laughs> The soldiers utilize the 18-inch bayonets affixed to their muskets to form a circle of sharpened steel and repel a direct horse-mounted assault on their formation. <laughs> Having successfully defended against the cavalry attack, the commander and chief's guard reforms the basic line formation to continue their attack. The line formation is the basic element of all formations and allows a unit to easily mass fires. Seeing an opportunity to close with the enemy, the commander once again advances his unit, this time in an attempt to force the opposition from the battlefield. In preparation for his final assault, the commander will employ the Daniel King howitzer and musket fire to suppress the enemy on the battlefield. To the front! And snap! Ah! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ah! Take care! Fire by the giant! Fired by battalion, the commander continues his movement forward, preparing for his final assault to destroy the enemy. The bayonet charge. The ultimate objective of tactical maneuver on the battlefield was most often decided by one side or the other, giving in to panic when confronted by an advancing wall of cold steel. To the front and snap! Ah! Two, Chief's Guard. The commander now reforms the battalion on the colors after a successful bayonet charge. By 1779, the Continental Army's regular regiments had become formidable battlefield opponents whom the British and their Haitian allies hesitated to confront. In particular, their ability to stand their ground during British bayonet charges and then counter produced several victories Forward. during the latter part of the war and ultimately helped secure the independence of the United States. Once again, it is a that comes to your chief's guard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the United States Army Military District of Washington, the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. It is, it is our pleasure to have presented today's special performance. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Nice job, guys.